Working on new ideas all the time is uh, very much like uh, pulling out a bunch of threads. Some of them come off in your hand um, and never lead anywhere. Others you keep on pulling and pulling, you've got no idea what they're going to turn into. And then they just come off in your hand as well. Um, but occasionally um, you pull a thread and it grows and it gets thicker and it gets thicker and suddenly it, it gets thick enough for you to grab with both hands and for you to put all your efforts into that one thread and you pull it and it turns into a rope and then it, it becomes something a lot more than you initially thought it was going to be. Uh, my work on uh, Child's Landscape is one of those situations where a number of things were happening at the time um, and they all seemed to come together at the right time. Um, I was working on Poppet Sands and I was very interested in the uh, negatives that I was uh, making on the film at Poppet Sands and also I was very interested in taking pictures of things underwater abstract images, I was working quite a lot on that. And um, I'm also always influenced by the coastline, um, uh, the Pembrokeshire coastline, it is, it is absolutely amazing. Um, and there was one particular beach next to uh, Poppet Sands called uh, Kyber Bay um, that I was playing with uh, my children on and uh, they were running around uh, screaming and shouting as they do and then suddenly they said, Dad, can you see all the dinosaurs? And I, I didn't know what on earth they were talking about until they pointed out to me. And as soon as I saw what they were talking about, the whole beach came alive with rocks that looked like dinosaurs. And it, it tweaked in my mind that suddenly, if you make a step towards looking at the world where a child does, and using your imagination like a child always does, uh, then things become alive and the unreal becomes real and once I saw these dinosaurs I couldn't stop seeing them they were absolutely everywhere it was like my mind had taken a switch into another plane somehow um, and that really fascinated me uh, and I started combining the three elements together um, along with um, my, my interest in um, rocks and uh, Lots of experimentation uh, based on um, reality. At the end of the day, I had to base it. If I wanted to get something that looked fascinating and exciting, I wanted a item that looked real up to a certain point. Um, and I, but I wanted to look, it to look fantastical as well. Uh, and to base all of that on reality, you have to understand how reality works, which is why I spent a long time drawing the cliffs uh, near Kyber Bay, um, because you do have to give your work a very firm foundation on reality. It has to be based on something that looks real. You have to understand how the horizon looks um, and how the rock looks if you're going to try and reproduce that through other experiments that just happen to be going on at the same time I uh, discovered the, the the amazing qualities of rock uh, I found a particular lane that's really close to where I live uh, called Badger Lane and I was walking the dogs up there one day and there was an immense amount of frost damage to some of the rocks there and they were rocks were jutting out all over the place and it, it made me realize when I looked at them that if I made that switch that my children had made on the beach and started looking at things in a different way those rocks became mountains those rocks became jagged sharp teeth of a cliff edge um, and so I started collecting these rocks uh, and it has to be a particular type of rock um, but luckily Badger Lane's got loads of them so that's where I collect all of my rocks now I go with a bag and I uh, selectively pick out ones that I think that will work really well. Um, and it amazes me, you can hold one of these rocks in your hand, but if you photograph it in a certain way, it becomes an enormous towering cliff. It becomes a incredible storm-drenched uh, adventure for your imagination. Uh, so 
it seems to me that a rock, no matter how big or no matter how small it is, they still hold the same kind of qualities. You can make a really ha a stone that holds in your hand, you can hold in your hand, you can make it look like an enormous towering cliff quite easily because they both still hold the same structural um, similarities, no matter how big or how small they are. Once I've been out to uh, Khyber and done my drawings and uh, taken inspiration from the rocks and the cliffs there, and also been to Badger Lane and collected a number of stones and rocks, uh, the process in the studio um, is reasonably straightforward. As long as I base everything on the reality of my drawings, uh, then I can take these rocks and um, photograph them in such a way uh, that uh, they become what I want them to be, they become part of the, a child's landscape, they become something that a child would imagine if they were playing or if they saw a landscape. A child doesn't see a landscape as a grown-up would see it. I think an adult would see a, um, a landscape as a selection of facts that you know about and you're familiar with. A child would see a landscape full of adventure, excitement, storms, pirates, shipwrecks, um, expeditions, swooping seagulls, and that they would be so wrapped up in the um, general excitement of the, the whole thing, and their imagination would be going crazy. Uh, that's what I wanted to, to kind of touch on a little bit with the images, and I, and I find the fact that the images aren't real, the fact that they're not a real landscape that has been doctored in Photoshop, the fact that it's a completely made up um, landscape, uh, the unreality of them allows you to make that little switch that the child does and allows your mind, if you can make that jump into the imagination, suddenly the, the fact that they're not real makes them more real and it makes them more maybe easier to uh, believe that they are something as exciting as a um, storm drenched cliff face. Uh, yeah, it, it, it needs that switch and I don't think it is easy to make that switch when you look at a standard landscape. You have to do something to it or make your own landscape that to ease yourself into that state of thinking.